Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Well, I am the queen of casseroles, and so tonight we have another fabulous casserole coming at you. And it's going to be creamy chicken Florentine casserole. So let's get started. So this recipe was originally a food.com recipe. Um, chicken Florentine is popular in some Italian restaurants. Um, it is basically a creamy spinach sauce with chicken. Sometimes it's got mushrooms in it. And I'm going to be making it very easy. It has very few ingredients. The original recipe had cream of mushroom soup, and that's not a very ketogenic um, food. It has a lot of thickeners in it. So I have made it so that it will be a low carb option that's very fast and family friendly. If you had family members that were not eating on the ketogenic lifestyle, you could easily pair this with noodles or even potatoes if you wished. So let's go ahead and jump into the recipe. So the first step that we wanna do for our creamy chicken Florentine casserole is we need to preheat our oven because we are going to bake it after we're done assembling. So your oven needs to be at 400 degrees. So I have pre-prepared a couple of things. The first thing is four ounces of mushrooms, and I just sauteed these a little bit in some bacon drippings. And these are baby portobellos, but you can use white mushrooms, you could use any kind of mushroom that you enjoy, and that's four ounces, and they're sliced. The other thing I have is bacon, and that is two-thirds of a cup of crumbled bacon, which is what I'm using in this step. If you wanted to use strip bacon, you need about four strips cooked and crumbled up, and I have just rewarmed them in their own drippings. We are going to need a saucepan to create our sauce for our chicken Florentine. You are also going to need three pounds of chicken. I have boneless, skinless chicken thighs here that I have already cooked and cut up. If you wanted to use a rotisserie chicken in this step, you absolutely could. That would be very uh, time-saving. But these are just boneless, skinless thighs cut up, and that is three pounds worth. So we want to start our sauce. Now the original recipe that I found was from food.com and it used a cream of mushroom soup in this step. And cream of mushroom soup is not a ketogenically friendly item. It has a lot of starches in it. And of course that brings the carbs up. So I am creating something that is more ketogenically safe but also in keeping with the same theme. So we want to start with two tablespoons of butter and just put that in our saucepan and we want to turn our heat on and get our butter going. For this casserole we are going to be using a 9 by 13 inch baking dish and that's what I have here. So you will definitely need one of these or something comparable in size if you have something that's a different shape. So mine happens to be... It doesn't say. It takes a long time for butter to melt. To our almost melted butter, we are going to be adding four ounces of softened cream cheese. I just like to soften my cream cheese because it helps get the incorporation going a little bit more quickly into our sauce. And that's four ounces, and I'm using Philadelphia brand because it's the lowest in carbs that I have personally found. Definitely check your carbs if you're going to be going for a grocery store brand. So we just want to start working our cream cheese into our butter. And it's going to look a little bit lumpy, so don't be alarmed. Just working on getting everything incorporated. So the next step that we want is we are going to be using heavy cream and I want two-thirds of a cup. And we're just going to continue to whisk this 
and our cream cheese will start to melt into the rest of our ingredients. And we're just keeping this on a medium heat. So we're basically making a white sauce and we are going to be adding some cheese to it. But this is essentially our creamy Florentine sauce. Our cream cheese has melted into the rest of our sauce. I want to add Italian seasoning at this point. I'm using just regular Italian seasoning. You can use whatever um, Italian seasoning that you like and however much you like. I like it fairly strong because this is going to be flavoring our entire dish. Okay, so we are going to be adding a cheese element to our sauce. I have a half a cup of grated Parmesan. I'm using the powdered kind. Um, you could absolutely use the shredded if that's something you prefer, but I do like the powdered in this step, and that's a half a cup. And we're just going to incorporate that. And the Parmesan cheese is going to help our sauce thicken a bit. Now to make our sauce spread a little further to accommodate our meats and mushrooms, and we are also going to be adding one more vegetable to this, I want to thin my sauce just a bit with some chicken stock. So I have a half a cup of chicken stock. And I'm just going to incorporate that and I'm just going to let it simmer for a minute. And while that is simmering, I am going to start getting some of the ingredients into my casserole dish. So we're going to go ahead and add our um, already done chicken. And as I stated in the beginning, if you wanted to use a rotisserie chicken in this step, you definitely could. But I'm just going to put that in the bottom of my casserole dish. And once again, that's three pounds. Now the other element of chicken Florentine is spinach. And so I have 10 ounces of spinach here and I've already cooked it and I have sufficiently drained it. If you're going to use fresh in this step, that's great too. Just be aware that spinach can produce water when it is cooked. So definitely be sure and strain it or squeeze it somehow to get it as dry as you can. Once again, I have 10 ounces. So I'm just going to take my spinach and just incorporate it into my chicken. Just getting it as even as I can into my chicken. And clean hands are your best tool here. Okay, so we have our spinach incorporated. <clears throat> we are going to add our other ingredients. I've got my mushrooms here. Set them in the center and then spread them around. Trying to get as even as you can so that every bit of casserole when you serve it has some mushroom. So here we have our sauce. And you can see that it is has gotten nicely thick and you can see all of our beautiful herbs in there. So I'm just going to pour that on and we're gonna stir this. So, my spatula to make sure I get all my sauce out. I'm gonna give this a bit of a stir just to get the sauce down into the bottom and get our chicken coated. Now we can't forget about our beautiful bacon. It is an extremely important part, so we are going to incorporate it as well. Make sure we get all of the bacon dripping because that's the yummy part. And I'm just going to 
incorporate that as well as evenly as I can. Our final step, or final ingredients rather, is two cups of mozzarella cheese. I'm going to put half of this and work it into the casserole and then I'm going to top the other half on top of my casserole. So I'm taking half of this and I'm going to incorporate it inside. And I like mozzarella in this step because it's a light cheese and it's not strongly flavored. So it is going to allow our, our Italian taste to come through, but still be cheesy. If you prefer a different cheese, you could absolutely use whatever you would like. Okay, now I'm just going to press everything down with my spoon. goodies off the spoon. I'm going to take the remaining mozzarella cheese and I'm going to sprinkle it evenly over the top so it will get nice and golden brown while our casserole is baking in the oven. So there's our completed casserole. And I'm going to put this into our 400 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how hot your oven cooks. So we're going to start with 20 minutes and then we'll check it after that. Okay, 400 degrees, 20 minutes. So here's what it looks like at 20 minutes. It's a little bit brown on the edges, which is great. But for me personally, I would like the top to be just a little bit more brown. So I'm going to broil it for a minute, a minute and a half, just to get the cheese a little bit more brown. It's perfect. Just what I wanted. Okay. So there it is after I broiled the top. Just what I wanted to happen. We're going to let it sit here and cool for a few minutes so that our sauce can settle and get thick and then I will cut it and we will serve CJ and get his opinion. Hi baby. Hi. Welcome to another fabulous casserole. Yep, we haven't made one in a while. No, I know. I gotta stay on the top of my game. This is creamy chicken Florentine casserole. Mm. Okay. Looks cheesy. Just like me. <laughs> so it'll fit in our house. Mm. It's good. I like it. It's really the uh, what is that Parmesan cheese? Uh, the mozzarella. Mozzarella cheese makes it really cheesy. I think I need to need to add some salt, but okay. other than that, I mean that's a personal thing anyway. Right. I think it's good. Good. I think this should be on our food rotation. Okay. Awesome. For a while. That's yeah. Looked like it was easy to make too. Yes. It was. Um, good job, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us, you guys. We hope that you enjoy another delicious casserole. We are definitely looking forward to enjoying it over the next couple of days. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell because we would like you to be notified of our new recipes and any of the rest of our content. We have ketogenic conversations on Wednesdays. Sometimes that includes uh, food reviews, food unboxings, other things that incorporate ideas for the ketogenic lifestyle, and that is on Wednesdays. If you need any recipe information, please head over to our blog, that is cjsketokitchen.com. That's where all the ingredients, uh, tips that I have learned while making this particular recipe, all of our other recipes and other recipe ideas 
are always found there, so definitely check it out. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter, and a lot of times we release photographs, and that is where other people can take pictures of what they've made and also share tips and tricks that they are learning as well. So definitely check us out there, and that is CJ's Keto Kitchen everywhere. So we hope that you will come back and see us again, because we enjoy having you here. And until next time, be well.